Hey everyone, my name is Daniel and in today's video I'll show you how you can use some of the latest Excel integration features with Microsoft Forms. So first we'll start by going to an Excel spreadsheet and from there directly create a Microsoft Form and I'll show you how real-time data appears in that Excel spreadsheet while the form is being used by end users. Then I'll take it to the next level where everything I just talked about can be done in a collaborative fashion where multiple users can see that. And I'll give you a little tip. The Excel spreadsheet is actually stored in SharePoint. And finally, I'll end with a few tips on how all that Excel data which is sitting there, we can go ahead and use in some analytics functions, buy some graphs, just so that the Excel data is useful over there. So stick around, this is very important. The whole thing can be done without a single line of code. So stick around. But first, here's my intro video. So from my Microsoft 365 homepage, I'll click on the app launcher and I'm gonna to go to Excel. Now I'll go and click on a new blank workbook. Once I'm inside the workbook and this is brand new, I can click on the top level, it says book one, and I can actually go and give it a name. This is for the file name. So I'll say live demo of Excel. All right, so I did that. Now I can go to my insert and over here you see Microsoft Forms on the top menu. When you click on the drop down, this is what you see. You see the plus new form and that's all you should be seeing right now because we haven't even gone and connected and integrated a form yet. The moment I go and click on this plus new form, on this right side, you see this menu slides open and it says your new form is ready. If the new form doesn't automatically show up after a few seconds, select open form. And in my case, that's exactly what happened. That new form did not open. And let me give you a little tip as to why. You see on the top right, you've got this little rectangle box with a line cutting across it. If I go and hover over it, it says pop-ups were blocked on this page. Now this is a browser setting. This has got nothing to do with Microsoft 365 or Forms. That's a browser setting. So if I go and click on it, it by default is set to continue blocking but I know this is coming from a Microsoft Secure site. So actually I'll go and select the other radio button and I'll go and click on done. So that the next time I do this, it will actually open up another tab and I can see the Microsoft form. However, even right now, all is still fine because I can go and click on this button, which is open form. And the moment I do that, another tab opens up. So we've actually started our integration directly with that Excel spreadsheet. And just to prove that, watch this, I'm gonna take this off over here. So the Excel spreadsheet is on the left side and the form is on the right side and this little window, I can go and close it. So you can see now in real time that Excel spreadsheet is now directly tied to the making of this form because already we've got the ID column, start time, completion date, email and name. Now I know what some of you are thinking because I can feel your wheels turning. It says, Daniel, this means that this is not an anonymous form. I say, exactly, it is not anonymous. Why? Because in now, right now, we know the name and the email of the person. So that's an important thing for you to know is that when you're going and doing it through this Excel integration, it goes ahead and creates it as an internal form, but you've got the option to go ahead and make it anonymous. All right, so in this case, now I can actually go ahead and use Copilot just to go ahead and give me a demo. So here's what I'll do. I'll actually go ahead and put this in. It says, give me a list of five questions for fifth grade level math quiz. Use multiple selection type answer. That's the prompt I've put in. I'm gonna go and click on generate. And so now Copilot is analyzing my requirements. It is gonna go and first create my draft and voila, in just a few seconds, Copilot went and created this for me. All right, so for the sake of this demo, I'll at least click the answers. But let me see, does it give me any more styles? I mean, it knows that this is an exam type of a thing. So I am going to go and stick with this layout because I have always liked that. Let me scroll down a little bit, see if I can get any more things. Oh, I like that. So I'll go and select with that way. All right, so for right now, I'm like everything else. I'm gonna go and keep it. And if you notice on the left side, the Excel spreadsheet has synchronized with the form. Now, keep in mind, this workbook syncs automatically with the changes of the Microsoft form. So I don't have to come to my Excel spreadsheet to do any additional step. This Excel integration with Microsoft forms truly is very deep. And just to be sure, in this Excel spreadsheet on the left side, we originally started with sheet number one, but it automatically added a new worksheet and called that as form one. And if I go and slide to the right, you can now see 
our five questions have shown up over here as well. So what's the first thing we want to do? Test it just to make sure that the answers are coming in. So I'll go and click on the preview on the right side. I'll go and do start now. What is the value of seven times eight? That's 56. Which of the following numbers are prime numbers? Prime numbers are those which only can be divided by itself. So I'll go and select as five. What is the parameter of rectangle with length five centimeters? What is the parameter of a rectangle with length five centimeters and three centimeters? That's five plus five is 10. Three plus three is six. Well, 10 plus three is 16. So I'll go and do that over here. And which of the following fractions are equivalent to half? Well, I know it's at least this one and that one um, and that one as well. Then what is the sum of the angles in a triangle? Well, that's 180 degrees. So I'll go and do that. Click on submit. Form is submitted and voila, I blinked my eye and the answer showed up and the message comes up over here as well. So I really like this almost. It's almost real time. There is a little bit of lag in maybe one or two seconds. But here's the deep, deep Excel integration. Now, one of the things about this Excel spreadsheet is it is sitting in your OneDrive. So if I go and click on this section over here, uh, this is Daniel Christian. If I go outside it, it actually takes me to my OneDrive. So if on my homepage directly, you see it's right over here. And if I click on that My Files and right and see if I, scroll, if I scroll down right over here, this is the one that we just created about a minute ago. So I'll click on that one and we are now back into the Excel spreadsheet. So that's the key thing that when you go ahead and build it this way, it stores it in your OneDrive and saves it over here. So when you want to start using this collaborative functionality, you cannot use this one, which is a new form and the new quiz. What you have to do is actually scroll down and come to this My Groups. So I'm going to go and click on this show more because I can see all of the groups and actually select a specific one of these groups. And if you've already guessed it, that all of these that you see are at Microsoft 365 groups that could have been created from so many other services, but you have access to these groups and therefore you can go ahead and now create your Microsoft form in the back end SharePoint of these groups, hence the term group. So on the bottom left, you see information technology. That's the group that I'm going into. And voila, you now see new group form and new group quiz. So I'll go and now create my new group form. And over here again, Copilot kicks in. But before I leverage that, I'm going to go and try one of these templates. On the templates, I see a bunch of these options. So I'm actually going to go to the bottom and this one over here, entertainment event feedback. I'll go and select it and I automatically got a nice form created. What I'll also do is see what are the suggestions Copilot is giving me. So I'll actually go and click on view. It is analyzing the form based on the template that we created. We'll wait and see if it actually generates any new design. And yes, it did. In fact, for a form like this, I really like that design over here, entertainment event feedback. So I'll select it and then I'll go and say keep it. And it has gone ahead and updated all of it. So for right now, right now I'm gonna go and do the skip part of it. Uh, we'll just go and see all of this form. So if I now go to the backend SharePoint this, because I wanna see, did this form's backend Excel spreadsheet get created? I'll go and click on that tab. And this is one way for me to remember that the group name was information technology. But even if you've forgotten what it is, you can always come back to the form on the top. If you click on the drop down, it gives you that hint that it was actually information technology and not any other name. So back again on the tab, I'll go for my SharePoint and I'm looking for that information technology site. So let me go to my see all that way. I can actually see all of my sites on the top. I'll actually do a search information technology. There you go. So I'll go and click on it. Another tab opened up and I should see that in my documents library. So when I click on my documents library, I already have this app folder, but this apps folder is way in the past. I am not seeing that new Excel spreadsheet. So what am I missing? Well, let me first do another thing. Let me actually go and take that Microsoft form and open up into another tab. This one over here, I'll make a tab on the left, the form on the right. Now watch this, all right? Don't blink, watch this. When I go and do a preview and I start filling out the form, uh, I'll go and do some, yes, this is my next one. I'll say, this is your first event. Yes, uh, this was with another person. Uh, how did you find out about that? Social media, overall rating, excellent. And then I'll just go and start to say things were good, blah, 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 blah. None of it is mandatory. Um, I'll just go and click on submit. The data got submitted, but I still don't see my Excel spreadsheet. What am I missing, Daniel? Let me show you. Let's go to our back. Let's go to our responses. And this one over here, open in Excel. When I click on it, it says, get ready to enjoy your Excel data. 
it goes ahead and creates that Excel spreadsheet. It goes ahead and does a synchronization, but I'm still not seeing it over here, which makes me wonder, am I even in the wrong place? And the best way to find out what the correct place is, come over here to the Excel spreadsheet on the dropdown. And yes, we are in the information technology site, but it is shared documents. So let's click on that hamburger menu. Let's go and do the site contents and we should see shared documents over here. Now I did this intentionally to tell you that we were in the right place. This shared documents over here is the exact thing as documents on the SharePoint site. And if you ever have a doubt, click on it. It'll take you directly to the same place. Um, and then you can always go ahead and copy that link. But now you've got that real time connection where not just you as the maker, but anybody else who has access to the site can do that collaborative feature. And you can always find out who these other people are because on the top right, you see there are 10 members. Uh, one of them is actually this user named Finn. Finn is my dog. So I've already gone and signed in as Finn right there. See, that is Finn signed in. So I'll click on that. So I'll click on the app launcher. Let's go to our SharePoint site. Now Finn also has access to that site. So if I go to the left side and click on see all, there it is, information technology. Uh, go to documents. And we also and Finn also sees that Excel spreadsheet. So if I click on these ellipses over here, click on the open and go in the browser, Finn will also be able to real time see all of this data coming in. And just as a demo, let me go ahead and move this one down just a little bit. Let's go ahead and open this one up over here, open in the browser, because that's me signed in. This is Finn signing in. Let me go back to this question and let me go and fill out this form once again. So I'll go and say, start now. Is this your first time attending? No, another person. Let me just go ahead and fill out a few things over here really fast. There you go. Both of them went ahead and updated it. See that new row, which was ID number two, automatically got updated and both the people of that group, myself and Finn, we are able to see it. So this is the fantastic collaborative feature which is available. And by the way, both of these are happening on Excel spreadsheets. These spreadsheets are synced directly into this Microsoft form, but the only tip away on the collaboration side is that spreadsheets are saved in a document library in the SharePoint site that is a Microsoft 365 group. It's also important to know that the collaboration is not just on the backend data, but it's also on the form directly. Because even though it's me signed in, I was the one who created the form, it shows over here that Finn is also editing, which means Finn can also come over here and modify the form. So keep that in mind is that collaboration is not just about the data, it's also about the form design. Now, Microsoft Forms does provide good analytics in its responses section. So for this form, if I go to the responses, you can see that there were four responses put in. Um, and over here, we've actually got a donut chart, which is saying it's pretty 50-50. The number of people who are attending for the first time, uh, it's 50-50. And then over here, did you attend this by yourself or someone else? Again, another donut chart. So the graphs are actually pretty good out of the box. But if for some reason you want to do your own analytics graph design, then just go to that Excel spreadsheet. This is that Excel spreadsheet that we opened up. So when you come over here, you see your data and then make sure that you select in one of the cells, go to the insert. And this is where you can start going and doing your own charts design. Um, just keep in mind that you actually first have to select inside the cell. So for example, I've selected outside and now the slicer option has grayed out. Uh, so if I go and click on it, the slicer comes back. It's actually a filter. I'll click on it. And this time I'm going to actually say, yeah, this is based on if it is attending for the first time um, or did you attend this by yourself? Like I'll go and get these two slicers out, goes ahead and does that. Uh, also keep in mind that when you do this, suddenly now I only see two rows. Doesn't mean you've lost anything. It's just that the slicer actually takes effect. So I'll just go ahead and now filter it out right over there, clear it out. And when you see it shows up, so you haven't lost anything. It's just the slicer automatically enacting with it. Um, click again on any one of these sides over here, and then you can go into the statistical piece and you can go ahead and get any one of these graphs that you want. It automatically went and detected all of these cells and it's actually showing you also how you can add the data. It picked up all of these, but you can modify it and it's showing you that. In my case, I'll take all of it. I'll click on apply. Uh, and then you've got the flexibility to go and do any formatting, 
add or remove any of the fields that you want but you've got full flexibility over here in excel create that deep analysis uh, which is completely different and maybe more enhanced than what we are seeing over here this is just one of the things that i've shown you but you've got so many other options available again back in the insert and you can go and build any of these charts so hopefully this excel integration with microsoft forms was useful to you especially the collaboration functionality where you go and create that form from the Excel groups, which is SharePoint. Because now multiple one of you can actually have access to that Excel spreadsheet. And hey, one of you may be very savvy with the analytics and they can go ahead and build custom reports using that Excel database, which is a step up from the analytics that Microsoft Forms provides out of the box. Hopefully this video was useful to you keep using Excel integration with Microsoft Forms. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment, either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.